Gamification is um, it's kind of a new term that's become very uh, popular in educational technology circles, but what it's basically uh, describing is the process of taking traditional instruction and adding different kinds of game elements to it. The idea of fun, the idea of interactivity, the idea of uh, levels, like you move from one level to the other once you've achieved achieved mastery of a certain level. Finding ways to engage the student with the learning so that it's not just a linear, passive kind of learning experience. Students, and this was a study conducted by MIT recently, uh, they determined that the brain patterns in students are exactly the same when they watch TV as when they actually are in class, meaning they're absolutely passive. There is a lot to be learned from the game industry because they've been very successful at creating experiences for people that engage them at, at very deep levels. So we need to find ways to make sure that we are not only delivering the curriculum but delivering in a way that is efficient. We're working with a professor in the College of Veterinary Medicine who's is very eager to find a way to train his students in how to perform laparoscopy on dogs and cats. Basically, this is the spaying technique. I was very interested in to go into educational surgery, so how I can teach surgery uh, our students. My favorite area is minimal invasive surgery and especially laparoscopy. My idea or my vision was to see if we can teach the student th this uh, surgical technique. The majority of medical students entering the field are actually a generation of game players. The time to learn laparoscopy basic tasks after you, you train in video games and compare it to people that don't play video games, we saw that there is a, a big difference. So that pushes us really, really, you know, to do something towards, you know, gaming and, and introduce you know, games to the training for laparoscopy. In Texas A&M, they have a, a, a room with video games and the surgeons must come, it's mandatory, come before they start surgery and play video games. So fun and work together and it um, reduce, if I remember well, almost 80% of the complication. I still can only take it part of the way. And so it's, it's fun to see what my staff then does with it once I hand it off to them because they find all sorts of other things they can do to improve it or, or build on it and stuff. So it's quite a, quite a nice collaboration we have here in that respect. I had been working at an indie game development studio for about a year and a half and I decided I wanted to expand my horizons to experience things that are not specifically just games in general but something that helps people with using games. So it's up to him to make the programs that we design on paper actually work in real life. And there's a lot to that. The future of gamification is in virtual reality. And we've acquired recently uh, the Oculus Rift, which would allow us to immerse the learner in a virtual environment where they would learn in a 3D space. Like we don't have to use the real you know, uh, instrument, but it will be, everything will be virtual. The organs will be virtual, will be by animation. It's something you have to try yourself. And so the lunch, the VR lunch meeting that Mike and I had set up was meant to expose people to what the Oculus Rift is all about. We had created a museum environment experience to showcase some of our ongoing projects. It's funny because every time, every time people would see it, they would, first thing is they want to reach out and try to touch it because your body feels like you're in there. So the next thing is trying to interact with it directly. It was real exciting for me earlier this year when I had scanned my first item from analog, basically a, a, a real bone, into a virtual model and cleaned it up and then converted that back into a real object again with 3D printing. Not only does the scans give us the ability to represent that model in a virtual way so that you know, it, it, there isn't any degradation of, of the actual model, but with Gary's skills, we can also reprint that. Because some of the, the, the real bones that, that typically we have to study are, are very fragile. So this gives us an opportunity to test something that's, that's more durable. The files that we get normally from the scans are huge. 
And what Jeff has begun doing is figuring out how to take those huge files and bring them down in size. And optimize it to a lower detail version, but keeping, uh, keeping as true as I can to the source. This workshop that we did was really an opportunity for us to let people not only learn about gamification, but actually experience it. So the workshop was really loaded with a lot of interactive kinds of activities. They were able to go through the iPad exercises and either complete them individually, if, if that was the requirement, or complete them together with other members of a group, which was also required in some cases. So it gave them the opportunity to experience the competitive nature of gamified learning as well as the cooperative possibilities of gamified learning. We are giving a chance for the students to, f be a f to be full participants in the learning process. It's been exciting to see how, how medicine and how teaching of medicine and, and our interaction with the students has changed. It's just been, it's just been a thrill for me. You see the impact of what you're making right away, which is really encouraging, uh, seeing how people react to your, uh, the programs you create. It can really immerse the students in whatever topic they're trying to learn. And we have hundreds, if not thousands, of opportunities like that in our multiple curricula to do stuff like that. It's, it's amazing. And I think it can revolutionize uh, teaching and learning in general, and it can make a huge difference for achieving student success.